Imagine, if you will, a creature so small, yet so cunning, that it can take down an opponent several times its size with the finesse of a seasoned hitman. This is no ordinary insect. It's not a passive bystander in the grand theater of nature. No, this is the praying mantis, a creature so skilled in the art of the kill that it makes even the deadliest predators look like amateurs. There it stands, with its elongated body, clasped forelegs, and those large hypnotic eyes that seem to pierce right through your soul. The praying mantis might look like it's in a meditative pose, praying for peace and harmony in a world gone mad. But don't be fooled by its serene posture. This little creature isn't praying for forgiveness. It's plotting its next move, like a cold-blooded killer planning the perfect crime. You see, the praying mantis is not just a bug. It's nature's most eccentric assassin, a creature with a lethal skill set that would make even the most hardened warrior tremble. Its very existence is a testament to the power of evolution, a reminder that sometimes the most dangerous creatures come in the smallest packages. Now let's talk about those eyes. You might think you've seen it all when it comes to animal vision, but the praying mantis has something special, a visual system that is nothing short of extraordinary. With two large forward-facing compound eyes and three simple eyes perched on its forehead, the mantis has a total of five eyes, each one contributing to its ability to hunt with precision. But it's not just the number of eyes that makes the mantis a visual virtuoso, it's the quality. The mantis is the only insect known to possess true 3D vision, allowing it to judge distances with the accuracy of a laser-guided missile. Imagine, if you will, being able to see the world in three dimensions with the clarity of a hawk, yet all within the confines of an insect's tiny skull. That's the mantis for you, nature's very own sniper, always ready to strike. Research has shown that the praying mantis can detect movement from up to 60 feet away. That's the length of a bowling lane, and to a creature this size, it's like spotting a needle in a haystack. Imagine if your vision was so sharp that you could spot a fly buzzing at the far end of a football field, then calculate the exact trajectory needed to intercept it in mid-air. That's the level of precision we're talking about here. The strike of a praying mantis is a thing of beauty and terror. It happens in less than a tenth of a second, faster than the blink of an eye. The mantis extends its forelegs, snatching its prey with a move so swift and so accurate that it would put even the most skilled martial artist to shame. But unlike a martial artist, the mantis doesn't settle for just a tap or a point. No, it goes for the kill every time. And speaking of kills, let's talk about what's on the menu. The praying mantis is not your average picky eater. It's an opportunistic predator, willing to devour anything that crosses its path, whether it's a cricket, a lizard, or even a bird. Yes, you heard that right. This tiny insect has the audacity to take on creatures several times its size, and more often than not, it comes out on top. In fact, a study published in 2017 documented over 147 cases of praying mantises preying on birds across 13 different countries. It's not just a one-off occurrence, this is a pattern of behavior that reveals just how bold and dangerous these insects can be. They don't just catch their prey, they hold it by the skull, feast on its brains, and then finish the job like a seasoned executioner. It's as if the mantis took a cue from Hannibal Lecter and decided, why settle for crickets when I can have bird brains? Now, how does an insect manage to overpower something so much larger? The answer lies in those powerful raptorial forelegs equipped with rows of sharp spines. Once the mantis locks onto its prey, there's no escape. It's like being caught in a bear trap with the jaws of life closing in on you. And those jaws, oh, those jaws. They're like a pair of industrial-grade scissors slicing through exoskeletons and bones alike with ruthless efficiency. But it's not just brute force that makes the praying mantis such an effective hunter. It's also strategy. The mantis is a patient predator, willing to wait hours, even days, for the perfect moment to strike. It's the insect equivalent of a sniper, camouflaged and motionless, waiting for the unsuspecting target to wander into its crosshairs. And when that moment comes, it strikes with the precision of a surgeon and the ferocity of a wildcat. And let's not forget about the mantis's impressive camouflage. Some species, like the orchid mantis, have taken the art of disguise to a whole new level. These mantises don't just blend into their surroundings. 
they become their surroundings. The orchid mantis, for example, looks so much like a flower that it can attract pollinators better than the real thing. It's like the Trojan horse of the insect world, luring in unsuspecting prey with its beauty, only to reveal its deadly nature at the last moment. Research has shown that the orchid mantis can attract pollinators at a rate 30% higher than actual flowers. It's as if Mother Nature herself decided to create a perfect killing machine. And she did so with a touch of irony. Who would have thought that something so beautiful could be so deadly? But that's the praying mantis for you, a creature full of surprises, each one more terrifying than the last. But the praying mantis doesn't stop at just one type of mimicry. No, it's got a few more tricks up its sleeve. Take the Egyptian praying mantis, for example. This species can change its color based on the environment, much like a chameleon. When the grass is green, the mantis is green. When the grass turns brown, the mantis follows suit. It's the ultimate shapeshifter, able to adapt to its surroundings with the ease of a seasoned spy changing disguises. And what's even more fascinating is that this color change isn't instantaneous. It happens gradually over a series of molts, with the mantis's body responding to changes in humidity and light intensity. It's as if the mantis has its own internal weather app, telling it when to switch outfits based on the forecast. Imagine waking up one day and realizing that your wardrobe automatically changes to match the season. That's the kind of adaptation we're talking about. But the mantis's camouflage doesn't just stop at color changes. Oh no, some species take it even further, mimicking not just plants, but other insects as well. The ant mantis, for example, has evolved to look like a black ant in its juvenile stage. Why an ant, you ask? Because ants are tough, aggressive, and generally unappetizing to most predators. By mimicking an ant, the young mantis deters potential threats, blending in with a crowd that no one dares to mess with. Then there's the iris oratoria, also known as the Mediterranean mantis. At first glance, it looks like your typical mantis, green, slender, unassuming. But when threatened, it reveals a secret weapon, eye spots on its wings that mimic the gaze of a much larger predator, like an owl. It's a classic case of, I'm bigger and scarier than I actually am, and it often works, sending predators running for the hills. Not all mantises rely on mimicry to survive. Some have developed other extraordinary adaptations, like the ability to change color in response to environmental conditions. The Egyptian praying mantis, for instance, lives in the savannas of Africa, where the grass can change from green to brown within a few days following rain. Researchers have noticed that when the grass is green, the mantises are green, and when the grass turns brown, the mantises follow suit. This ability to change color based on humidity and light intensity is known as environmental polymorphism, and it's a testament to the mantis's incredible adaptability. And it's not just environmental factors that influence the mantis's color. Some species can change color based on the intensity of light around them. High intensity light causes the mantis to turn brown, while low intensity light keeps it green. This adaptation likely helps the mantis stay hidden in changing environments, where light conditions can vary dramatically from one moment to the next. Perhaps the most astonishing example of color change in mantises is seen in those that live in areas prone to wildfires. These mantises, like the flower mantis, can turn from green to black at the end of the dry season when most fires occur. This coloration, known as fire melanism, helps the mantis blend into the charred landscape, making it almost invisible to predators and prey alike. And then, there are the mantises that take camouflage to the extreme, mimicking not just their surroundings, but specific objects within those surroundings. The orchid mantis, for example, doesn't just look like a flower, it looks like a specific type of flower, complete with delicate petals and vibrant colors. This type of mimicry, known as aggressive mimicry, allows the mantis to lure in unsuspecting prey, which mistakes the mantis for a harmless bloom. But the moment the prey gets too close, the mantis strikes, revealing its true nature in a deadly ambush. Mimicry and crypsis, these are the hallmarks of the praying mantis, and they've been honed over millions of years of evolution. In fact, mimicry in insects is considered one of the most powerful examples of natural selection, and the mantis is perhaps the most impressive practitioner of this art. 
While many animals rely on speed, strength, or venom to survive, the mantis relies on deception. It's a master of disguise, a trickster of the highest order, and it's not afraid to use its skills to get what it wants. But as we marvel at the mantis's ability to deceive, it's worth considering that there may be even more to this insect than meets the eye, literally. You see, humans are visual creatures, and we tend to focus on what we can see. But in the insect world, much of the action happens in realms beyond our perception, auditory, chemical, and tactile. It's entirely possible that the mantis is also a master of these other forms of deception, using sound, scent, or touch to confuse and capture its prey. Consider this. How does the orchid mantis attract more pollinators than real flowers? Scent cues are incredibly important for pollinators, helping them locate flowers from great distances. Could it be that the orchid mantis also mimics the scent of the flowers it visually emulates? It's a tantalizing possibility, one that would open up a whole new dimension of our understanding of this incredible insect. And while the research in this area is still in its early stages, the potential discoveries could be nothing short of mind-blowing. Beyond deception, beyond camouflage and mimicry, there's one more aspect of the praying mantis that makes it truly extraordinary. It's not just a hunter, not just a killer, it's a survivor. And like all survivors, it's had to adapt to some of the most challenging environments on Earth. From the deserts of Africa to the rainforests of Southeast Asia, the praying mantis has carved out a niche for itself in almost every corner of the globe. It can be found on every continent except Antarctica, thriving in environments that range from the scorching heat of the savanna to the humid depths of the jungle. And wherever it goes, it brings with it its signature blend of cunning, strength, and adaptability. But what's truly remarkable is how the mantis has managed to survive, not just in nature, but in the ever-changing landscape of the modern world. As human activity encroaches on natural habitats, many species have struggled to adapt. But the praying mantis has not only survived, it's thrived. It's not uncommon to find mantises in urban areas, perched on a windowsill or hiding in a garden, waiting for their next meal. They've even been spotted hitching rides on cars, traveling miles from their original homes, yet still managing to find food and shelter in unfamiliar territory. The mantis's ability to survive in captivity. While many insects struggle to adapt to life in a cage, the mantis takes it in stride. In fact, it's become a popular pet among insect enthusiasts who are drawn to its unique combination of beauty and ferocity. Watching a mantis go about its daily business, stalking, hunting, eating, it's like having a miniature Jurassic Park in your living room, only without the risk of being eaten alive. Let's not forget about the mantis's social skills, or rather, the lack thereof. You see, the praying mantis is a solitary creature, and when it comes to love, things can get downright murderous. You see, the female praying mantis is infamous for her post-coital habits. After a mating session, she often decapitates and devours her partner. And she doesn't do this out of spite. No, it's purely practical. The male provides a convenient, protein-rich snack that helps the female produce more eggs. It's like a twisted version of dinner and a movie, where the movie ends with the male becoming the dinner. Before you start feeling too sorry for the males, consider this. In some species, up to 28% of males manage to escape the deadly embrace of their partners. They've developed strategies to mate and dash, hoping to survive another day. It's a high-stakes game of love where the prize is survival, and the penalty is being eaten alive. And there's even more to the story. Researchers have found that the males who do get eaten actually contribute to the survival of their offspring. Their nutrients are absorbed into the female's body and passed on to the next generation. It's the ultimate sacrifice, ensuring that their genes live on, even if they don't. While the female mantis's cannibalistic tendencies might seem horrifying to us, there's a method to the madness. For the female, mating is a serious business. She's got to produce hundreds of eggs, and that requires a lot of energy. The male, on the other hand, doesn't have to do much beyond providing sperm. So, from a purely evolutionary standpoint, it makes sense for the female to turn her partner into a post-coital snack. It's not just the female that benefits from this arrangement. Studies have shown that the nutrients from the male's body are passed on to the offspring, giving them a better chance of survival. 
In fact, females that consume their mates produce more eggs and healthier offspring than those that don't. It's a win-win situation, at least for the female and her young. But what about the males? Are they just doomed to be dinner, or do they have some tricks of their own? As it turns out, male mantises have developed a few strategies to increase their chances of survival. Some approach the female from behind, hoping to avoid her lethal forelegs. Others will perform elaborate courtship displays, trying to distract the female long enough to get the job done. And in some cases, the males will actually try to mate with a female that's already well-fed, reducing the likelihood that she'll feel the need to snack on him afterward. But despite their best efforts, many male mantises do end up on the menu. And while that might seem like a raw deal, it's all part of the circle of life. For the mantis, survival isn't just about outsmarting your prey, it's about outsmarting your own species. It's a dangerous game, but one that's played out with remarkable success. Let's not forget that the praying mantis is not just a mindless killing machine, it's also a surprisingly intelligent creature, capable of learning and adapting to new situations. Studies have shown that mantises can be trained to recognize patterns and even colors, and they've been observed using tools in the wild. In one remarkable case, a mantis was seen using a stick to fish guppies out of a pond. This behavior had never been observed before, and it left scientists scratching their heads. How did the mantis figure out that it could use a tool to catch fish? It's a question that remains unanswered, but it's clear that this insect is capable of more than just brute force. It's a creature that's always thinking, always adapting, always finding new ways to survive. It's not just hunting where the mantis shows its smarts. These insects are also skilled at evading predators. When faced with a threat, some species will adopt a defensive posture, spreading their wings and making themselves look larger and more intimidating. It's a classic bluff, and it often works, scaring off would-be attackers who think they're up against something much more formidable. What if the predator isn't fooled? Well, the mantis has a backup plan. In addition to its physical defenses, the mantis has a unique auditory adaptation, a single ear located on its abdomen. This ear is specially tuned to detect ultrasonic frequencies, particularly those used by echolocating bats. When a bat is nearby, the mantis can hear its high-pitched calls and take evasive action, diving to the ground to avoid becoming the bat's next meal. With all these incredible adaptations, it's no wonder that the praying mantis has captured the imagination of scientists and nature lovers alike. It's a creature that defies expectations, constantly surprising us with its behavior and abilities. And while it may be small, it's a reminder that size isn't everything. In the world of the mantis, brains and brawn go hand in hand, making it one of the most formidable predators in the animal kingdom. So the next time you see a praying mantis, remember, it's not just an insect, it's a master assassin, a cunning strategist, and a marvel of evolution. It's an animal that has earned its place at the top of the insect food chain through millions of years of adaptation and survival. As we continue to study the praying mantis, who knows what other secrets we'll uncover? Perhaps we'll discover even more about its mysterious vision, or maybe we'll find out that it's been hiding even more clever tricks up its sleeve. One thing's for sure, the praying mantis will continue to fascinate and terrify us in equal measure, proving once again that nature's most dangerous creatures often come in the smallest packages. Until then, my friends, keep your eyes open and your guard up, for the next time you encounter a praying mantis, you'll know that you're not just looking at an insect. You're staring into the eyes of one of nature's most perfect killers.